Hey friends, I hope you're having a great day. I recently switched packs from the Osprey Aura 65 to the Osprey Levity 60, and this is the Levity, not the Lumina. So this video is going to be more of an overview, pretty brief, uh, just going over my experience with the pack so far, likes, dislikes, and then comparing some of the features to the ones on my old pack. If you do want a more in-depth, detailed review of this product and comparison to the old pack I used, please check out the blog post that I wrote. You can follow the link in the description. I'll also put it up on the screen. But that is a much more detailed, informational kind of write-up I did about this piece of gear. Also, there is an Amazon affiliate link included in the description for the Levity. Uh, just if you want to support the channel and maybe something shared here in this video today or even on the blog post convinces you that you would like to give this pack a try, uh, you can go through my affiliate link and most of you know how that works, but if you don't, it's just a little incentive to me for referring you to the piece of gear. No extra cost to you. So why the levity? Isn't that, you know, the boys version? Shouldn't you be using the Lumina, the girls version of the pack? This is not an issue of, well, you know, a man's pack is good enough for a woman. It has nothing to do with that. It is merely a sizing issue. So I explained this in a previous video, but pretty much with these set torso packs, uh, the women's small is too short and the women's medium is too long. I'm just somewhere in between. My torso is 17 and some fraction inches. I'll put it on the screen. With these Osprey packs, their set torso packs like the Levity, there's a little bit more torso length on the men's small before going up to the next size. And so it fits perfectly. It's exactly the size I need it to be. And uh, yeah, that's why I'm using the men's pack. And honestly, I kind of think with a lot of these brands, I could be wrong. I think the whole like women specific, men specific pack might be a little bit of a gimmick. Like I said, I could be wrong, but I just haven't noticed much of a difference between the two uh, pack genders other than color. And like I mentioned, that little bit of difference in the torso length which kind of makes sense. Women tend to have shorter torsos than men, but in my case, uh, the men's works for me. So how is it different? How is it better? Well, number one thing is the weight. That is what really made me gravitate towards choosing this pack is the considerable weight difference. And when we do look at the features and kind of compare the two packs, it is going to be kind of like comparing apples to oranges because this pack doesn't claim to be light. It has every bell and whistle you can think of. That's just not its purpose. Whereas this one is meant to be a lighter weight option and dare I say it, ultralight pack. I know there's some purists out there whose pack setup is a Walmart bag tied to a stick who will correct me and say this is not an ultralight pack. Uh, simmer down, friend. We can't all achieve your level of backpacking greatness. Let's go ahead and take a look at the features and kind of compare these two packs, even though um, they're really not the same design or, I guess, uh, category of pack. First and foremost, when comparing these two packs is going to be the weight. The Aura 65 is five pounds. <laughs> whereas the Levity 60 is two pounds. Pretty significant difference. Now, when I would load up the Aura for a weekend trip, my typical pack weight was anywhere between 24 to 28 pounds. And several times it would get up into the 30s, which as I explained in a previous video and we'll probably touch on a little bit in this one, caused some serious issues. Back pain, knee pain, hip pain, not a good situation. So this pack, when loaded up, is pretty hefty. The Levity, on the other hand, when loaded up for the last few trips I've taken it on, 
has come in between, you're not going to believe me, 17 and 19 pounds. That's pretty crazy. And that includes all of my gear for a three day, two night trip. And I did make some small changes since using this pack, very minor ones, like switching out my cook pot for one that was a little bit lighter. And so that is a small contributing factor to the lighter load. Um, but you're looking at from the start, just a three pound difference in the vessel you're using to carry all your gear. Next, I wanna take a look at just the design on each pack, starting with the Aura. So the clips, the buckles, the straps are significantly bigger on this pack, just very bulky clips and the straps are much, much thicker. You've got this web of different compression straps zigzagging over each other. And you've even got uh, the hip belt straps, which are incredibly, incredibly long uh, with a big bulky buckle on the end. Do I think that you actually need a hip belt with enough uh, strap on it and a bulky enough clip that you could like clobber a rabbit? Probably not. And I know a lot of people do cut the extra length off of their straps. But I'm the type of person who thinks, well, what if I ever want to resell my pack and I've cut it up in all of these ways uh, and that kind of devalues it. But um, so I've never cut off any of the straps and uh, it probably would help me out some, but that is just something about the aura that made it kind of just, I keep using the word, but bulky and uh, heavier in my opinion. Now compare it to the levity. Um, completely different. There is not uh, a series of compression straps weaving around. There's just this fairly thin cord that you can pull and adjust. All of the buckles are significantly smaller, just little plastic clips. The straps are thinner and uh, if it's not one of these thin blue straps, it's this uh, much thinner blue and white striped cord. And I even noticed that the little closure mechanism on the levity is significantly uh, looser and easier to adjust than on the Aura. You have to like pull it up and, you know, kind of fight with the cord. So that was a nice change. Overall, you can tell that a lot of careful thought um, and just intentional decision making was made in the design of this pack to be as light as possible, but still functional and still be able to carry a reasonable sized load. Um, they didn't cut corners, they just cut the crap. So they cut out everything that was really just unnecessary and too much. And even the hip belt buckle is much smaller and the strap is much shorter. I think you could still probably clobber a rabbit pretty good with it, but uh, you'd really have to reach. Overall, I really like the thought that went into the design as far as the straps, cords, buckles, all of those little details that clearly contribute to making this a significantly lighter pack option. In terms of storage, the Aura has five liters more, it's a 65 liter, compared to the Levity, which is 60 liters. And I know bigger capacity, bigger number of liters, but the way that the space is allocated on the Levity, I feel like I have more room. And it may just be because of the way that the main compartment is not divided, there's not more you know, material there to hog up its own space. It could be that. But when I load up the Aura with my, you know, weekend trip amount of gear, I always feel like it is busting at the seams. I always feel like even though I'm taking the bare minimum, it just doesn't all fit. And I have to put things, you know, in this side pocket or in this front pocket and kind of spread it out across the pack to get the most use out of the space. And even then it feels like this pack is about to burst. Whereas with the levity, 
all of the big stuff fits. It just all fits into the big main compartment. I can put my water bottle, maybe a jacket, and then the stuff I need quick access to that you would usually put in your um, hip belt pockets. I just put in this brain pocket, fits great. So like my toiletry stuff, a snack or two, but the size of this main compartment is really, really spacious, just so impressive um, that it can fit the bulk of my gear, just about everything. So the fit and adjustments for these two packs are very different. The Aura has that kind of trampoline style uh, open back, which I love. For me, that's like a deal breaker if the pack doesn't have that. I love having this open airflow kind of panel. But so to adjust your torso length, it has this sliding uh, adjuster here on, on a kind of track. And so you'll slide it to fit your torso length. With the Levity, it's a set torso length. Um, there's no way to make it longer or shorter. It just is what it is. Now, just because it is a set torso length, that doesn't mean you can't kind of tinker with it and change the fit with some of these straps, if that makes sense. So you can really dial in that just right fit by adjusting the load lifting straps and the shoulder straps as well as kind of adjusting your hip belt. It was a little frustrating at first kind of tinkering with these straps getting it to just that perfect fit but loading it up with all the gear and taking it on and off three or four times to kind of adjust here or there. Once I got it to that right adjustment it was fine. The last comparison we'll talk about today is how the pack carries. So with the Osprey Aura, it is capable of carrying heavier weights or heavier loads, I should say. So you could load up 30, maybe even 40 pounds into this. I wouldn't recommend a 40 pound pack, but I think it could handle it. It could certainly handle 30. I've hiked with 30 pounds in this on several trips. Um, personally, I've said this a million times, 30 is my limit. Like that's too much. I got to stay under 30. If I can keep it to 25 or less, I am a happy hiker, happy camper. The levity, if you can keep it to 20 pounds or less, um, you're golden. I would not put 30 pounds in this. I don't think that structurally it could handle that, at least not well. I have loaded this with 25, 26 pounds on a trip, which we'll talk about in a minute, but it wasn't comfortable. It's doable, but not comfortable. Like I said, 20 to 25, if you can go less, great. That's kind of ideal for this pack, it being a lighter weight, lighter frame kind of pack. So while the Levity definitely can't handle as much weight or as hefty a load of gear as the Aura, I think that's a very good thing because it keeps me mindful of what I'm packing and make sure I stick to the goal of what I need my pack weight to be. That's kind of a overview comparison of the two packs. Now let's briefly talk about just my experience taking the Levity on a few hikes so far and uh, then we'll wrap this up. So I've taken the Levity on three hikes so far. I've taken it on a day hike, I've taken it on an overnight, and then I've taken it on just a full-fledged three-day, two-night backpacking trip. So gradually working up each step of testing it out. And the day hike, I loaded it up with all the gear that I would need for a three-day, two-night trip. That includes food, clothing and even a one liter Nalgene bottle. And it came to about 18 pounds, which was pretty good. I've never had my pack weigh, you know, less than 20 before, even for an overnight. When I first took it out, I was ready to hate this pack. I still had the box upstairs in the gear room, ready to put it back in the box, ship it back. It wasn't gonna be for me. Um, just because I've had lots of experiences where gear turns out to not be that great and you got to send it back. So I came at this with a very critical eye and was pleasantly surprised right away. 
but I knew that was not enough to go off of and not enough to make a final decision as to whether or not this would be my new pack. So I took it on an overnight trip and it came to about 17 pounds. Not bad, not too different from, you know, the day hike. And again, I only carried about a liter of water at a time just because there were places to stop along the way on this hike to refill. And we went 13 miles out from Kings Mountain to Crowder's Mountain and then 13 miles back the next day. So pretty decent distance to get a feel for the pack and uh, really notice if there was any issues as far as the fit and there weren't. It was completely comfortable. I had no knee pain and the trail was not incredibly strenuous. It was pretty moderate and pretty mild. A few climbs here and there, but overall, um, nothing too crazy. So with that, you know, kind of confidence boost in this piece of gear, I took it out for a three day, two night backpacking trip. I took it on the standing Indian loop and did about 25 miles with it. And there was a pretty decent amount of inclines, declines, little rock scramble here, there, uh, some nice, trail along the ridge on the Appalachian Trail and uh, enough variation in kind of the terrain and everything to get a feel for how this pack carries and how it fits um, in more strenuous circumstances, I guess. And again, no knee pain, which is the biggest thing. One of the main reasons that I switched my pack up in the first place was because this was the the factor that I connected it back to that has been causing all of my kind of pains and injuries post and also during the hikes. Having a lighter pack weight and just a different pack that fits better, I guess, uh, has made such a difference. And when I did get home, I did have a little bit of just post hike aches. And a little bit of that did come from pushing the limits with this pack. Um, there were some dry stretches on that loop, especially going in November. A lot of the water sources, you know, the smaller sources were dry or the bigger, more shore sources were like a measly trickle. And so there were some times when I had to carry more water than I was used to. When I left, the pack was 19 pounds with the one liter Nalgene bottle uh, full. And uh, I had three additional liters of water in a CNOC bladder. And so one liter is one kg, which is 2.2 pounds. So 2.2 times three, um, it added like about six pounds to it. So we're looking at like 25 pounds in the pack, maybe 25 and a half. And so that kind of did push the limit. It was a little uncomfortable, but it was doable and it was just for a couple miles until I got to camp. But after that, I never carried more than two liters at a time. So like one liter in the bottle and then one liter in the uh, water bladder just to get to the next water source. And so that really only changed it by, you know, two pounds, three pounds here and there. So I've said a lot of really great things about this pack. Um, I do have three points before I let you go of what I'm not so much a fan of. Um, it's not the lack of hip belt pockets. I really don't care about that or, you know, no sleeping bag compartment. What kind of um, bothers me about the pack is one, this thinner material makes me a little bit nervous. Like it's much more uh, sturdy looking or a thicker material on most of the pack. And then some of these areas are a lot thinner. I know that doesn't necessarily mean it's not tough material. It's just when I load the pack up and I can kind of see things through it, it makes me think like, well, what if that tears? What if it's not as sturdy as I hope it is? I haven't had any problems yet, so I'll just have to keep an eye on that. The other thing is the side pockets. Osprey is notorious for making their side pockets into like torture devices where you have to dislocate your shoulder to reach the bottle to just get a little sip of water uh, or take the whole pack off to get the bottle. Um, they mean well with this little side opening in the pocket, but it doesn't 
really work good in practice. It's like a nice in theory, not so much in practice. It can be helped if you've got like a Nalgene bottle and you turn it on its side and put it in the pocket that way instead of facing straight up, you put it in there horizontally and then you can kind of pull it out from the lid. That does work. But with these pockets being as big as they are and it kind of almost wrapping around the pack, uh, things get lost. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you watched all the way to the end. Like I said, check out that post, which has way more details as far as review for this product. Uh, link in the description or on the screen. And again, if you do want to use my Amazon affiliate link, like I said, it doesn't give any extra cost to you at checkout. It's just an incentive for me uh, for referring you to the piece of gear. And it's a way to support the channel if you want to, if you're already considering buying this product. But so I hope you have a great rest of your day and uh, be on the lookout for those two upcoming videos in which I have this pack with me. I um, can't give you a set date because editing takes forever. So don't want to promise something I can't deliver on. Just be looking for it in the next month or two. Tracing my footsteps through the wind.